In this video, I'll demonstrate just how easy it is to add a machine to MT Link I. First, let's take a look at our monitoring overlook view. This is a view of our shop floor. Presently, we have three machines, and we wish to add a fourth machine. So we're going to launch the MT Link I admin tool, click on machine setting, we'll right click and say add machine, and we'll enter in the name of this machine, and this is going to be a Robo Drill machine. The type of connection, this is a FANUC CNC on this machine. However, if this was some other device which supported OPC UA server communication protocol, or we could connect to a FANUC robot, or to other CNC manufacturers that use MT Connect as the communication protocol. We're going to stick with the default of FANUC CNC. This machine is a single path machine with an, three axes, just X, Y, Z, and a single spindle. We'll say OK, and we'll answer yes to the question that we do want to add a new machine. At this point, we enter in the uh, Ethernet IP address that's been assigned by the IT department. We'll leave the port setting and the timeout at the defaults. And this time setting has to do with whether or not we want the calendars and the clocks in the CNC to be synchronized with the PC server. Let's say yes we do. Every 24 hours let's sync them together. At this tab this is the basic signal. This is part of the beauty of MT Link I is that most everything is configured out of the box which alleviates the need to really know all the different signal definitions and which to pick and choose. There are 42 signals related to the CNC itself and for every servo motor there are 57 signals available. However, for the CNC 18 are already set as the default to enable and for the servos there are 29 that have been default enabled. However, if there is something that we would wish, wish to change, we can easily do that. For example, let's take a look at the feed rate override. Now this is one signal that's not default enabled. This is partly because each machine could be slightly different in how the override signals are controlled. So first thing we're going to do is say yes, we want to monitor these, the feed rate override. And we're going to use an outlier detection. And what this means is this is thresholds. So we're going to set it up so that there's a simple threshold checker and we'll open up the parameter setting. Now what we'd like to do is monitor the feed rate override knob when it's set to a certain level. So what I'm going to do is any time that the feed rate override is set to 110% or more, we're going to call it an error, and we won't have to do under, we'll just say over 110%, and we'll have a warning level if it's, let's see, 40% and under. And we'll just set this with no setting, so we're good. So whenever our feed rate override is 40 or less, or 110 or more, we're going to have warnings and errors. We'll say OK. Now let's take a look at the custom signal. Custom signal is where you could add if you wanted to monitor a PMC signal or macro variables or P code variables. In this instance, let's take a look at a PMC signal. So we just simply enter in the address. I want to look at Y12. Bit 3, and I want to sample it every 500 milliseconds. Say OK. 
We also have the ability to set up to monitor macro variables. However, I'll cover that in a future uh, tutorial. At this point, we say OK. Now we go to Equipment Setting. And we'll say Add Equipment. And this equipment will be, we'll call it the Robo Drill. Okay, and then the icon setting or the images that will be displayed on our background, on our uh, monitoring overlook screen. This is the default setting. You can choose from a multitude of different defaults, from different angles and views, or you can pick your own. These are samples that I downloaded from the internet. I just googled images of my machine and saved them as a PNG file. Now, for the uh, in this case, I'm just going to use the default settings. Say OK. Do the simple signal assign area. We'll just choose Robo Drill. Say OK. And in this, I'm going to pick and choose for a different screen what type of data I want to take a look at when I look at the equipment status. So when I take a quick look at a machine, I'd like to know what mode is it in. And let's see, what program is it running? And the comment of that program. And let's take a look at number of machined parts. And I'd also like to know how that feed rate override knob is set. And I'll say OK. Next, we'll assign this machine to a group. Now, we already have our machine shop layout configured. So now I'll just choose this machine and say Add It. And then say OK. Next, I'll come down to the layout setting. I'll click the checkbox for my new Robo Drill machine. And I'll drag it over into the shop floor where it exists. And I'll say OK. At this point, I'll send the information to the database. I'll stop the system, create the collector files, and then restart the database. Now, when we go into our monitoring overlook screen, we now have our new robo drill machine on the shop floor. And we can now see when I hit cycle start that the machine's in production right now. So you can see that is very simple to add a new machine to their shop floor layout. Please watch the batch setting video to learn how to export all of your settings to Excel files and then use copy paste functions to create multiple machines at once. These can be easily and quickly imported back into MT-Link-I.